Can you borrow voice? I want to borrow voice. Oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We thank God for grace this morning. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and sing, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, Jehovah. indeed this morning not for what you have done but for you are we worship you you are the great and mighty God the holy one of Israel the unchangeable changer the rock of ages the am that I am the almighty wonderful counselor mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the Almighty. We bow before you this morning. Thank you for all that you do for us as a nation, as your people, as your church, as families and individuals. Take all the praise. Thank you for life this morning. We can gather before you, not in distress, but in peace and in joy. Please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Today, as we dwell in your word, empower our thanksgiving by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Have your way, my father. Glory, worship be unto your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Happy New Month. We thank God for the choir. More grace unto you. In the name of Jesus. This month, our theme remains the Spirit of the Lord. And I'm sure we saw the theme on the landing coming up this morning. Our text is from Micah chapter 3, verse 8a. Micah 3, 8a. But truly, I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. 
This morning we are talking about spirit empowered thanksgiving. Spirit empowered thanksgiving. We know the spirit of the Lord. That's what we've been discussing in this um, this year. The third person in the Trinity, and when the regime of the Holy Spirit. So the thing I want to define there is just what is power. Power talks about ability, strength, and capacity to do something. So we are saying this morning that when God's spirit dwells in a person, that person's thanksgiving, praise, and worship can't be ordinary because God's spirit in him empowers him or enables him to praise God. If we check the Bible carefully, God seeks for two types of people. Number one, intercessors. And number two, worshippers. In Ezekiel 22 verse 30, Ezekiel 22 verse 30 says, And I sought for one, a man that would stand in the gap. So God seeks for intercessors. Likewise too, in John chapter 4, John 4, 23 and 24. John 4, 23 and 24 says, But the hour is coming and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. But the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. God is seeking for worshippers. Are there any worshippers this morning in the house? Can I hear hallelujah from you? Hallelujah. Now that would tell us the importance of worship and thanksgiving in things of God. If the almighty God with so many angels in heaven is still seeking for worshippers, that should give us an understanding that worship, thanksgiving, is a power to God. There are times that thanksgiving may appear as a duty. There are times when things appear not to be going well in our lives. There are times when the rent may be due and we can't pay. School fees may be due and we can't pay. Maybe out of job or in between jobs, as we say in the sanctuary. Or perhaps even the money you are meant to collect from, from the employer has not paid up to now. Or perhaps because of cash policy, money is in the bank and you can't take it out. Does it make sense? Nonetheless, God says we are to give him thanks. The song we sang and the first song that choir sang says, I praise for not what you have done, not what you have done, but for who you are. Because, you see, your worship is only genuine and true when it is done because of who he is, not for what he has done. If your worship is based on what he has done, then when he has done, done nothing to you, you will not worship him. Is that great? We need God's divine influence on our hearts by his spirit to offer him to worship. Why? Because genuine thanksgiving is a function of the condition of our hearts. And our heart is a function of the workings of the Holy Spirit. Michael 3 verse 8a. It says, I'm empowered. I have power by the Spirit of God. So the power to praise, the power to worship, will be infused in you this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. We must know that a man's heart, which is not renewed, can praise God effectively. Because that mind is at best carnal in nature. That mind begins to look at things based on what he has seen as tangible. Because a man tends to forget God's goodness. We don't remember his goodness when things are not the way they should be. Is that okay? We tend to forget his blessings, his goodness, and his faithfulness. No wonder David had to encourage himself in Psalm 103. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in me, bless his holy name. 
That scripture read through, he mentioned his soul three times. He was encouraging his inner man to begin to praise the Lord. Because he knows that if he doesn't do that, a man may have a tendency to forget God's blessing. This morning, I want to encourage us that no matter what we'll be going through, it's a good thing to give thanks to God. Because of what he has done so many things for us and for what he is to us. If you look at Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 to 19, I want to read for us Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. It says, though the fig tree may not bosom, nor fruit be in the vines, but the labor of the olive may fail, and the field yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He make my feet like their feet. And he will make me walk my high walls, high hills. Praise the Lord. In modern language, though business may fail, though there's no food in the house, though my employer has not paid me, though the landlord is threatening to evict me, Though my children are at home, are not on holiday, but because I can't pay school fees. Though there is no money in the account, yet I will rejoice and give thanks to my God. Brethren, thanksgiving is an attitude and a choice. You know, I read a devotional some time ago, and I want to recount to us what was there. A young man said he saw two men coming to his house at a point in time. And they came to take the keys to the car of the mother. Why? She couldn't pay uh, rent out on the vehicle, so they came to process that vehicle. And as they came, she kept saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And she was crying. And the young man said, ah, thank you, Lord. The car is going. You are still thanking God. But she kept thanking God that we have food to eat today. We have life. And what have you. And the man said, I learned a lesson from that story. That the hard time didn't go away. But God over time proved himself faithful. And he took from there a lesson that whatever comes his way, he should praise God. Brethren, tough times don't last. But the one who remains in the Lord will last forever. In the name of Jesus. Unbelievers can give praise to God when they have breakthroughs. Is that not correct? They will sing songs, blah, blah, blah. But it takes the man with pure faith to praise God before the breakthrough comes or because it's made manifest. I just said that yesterday at the communion service. If you look at Psalms 42, 1 to 5, the psalmist was in a form of distress. It appeared he was cut off from fellowship with God. And to make matters worse, the enemy or Gentiles was asking, where is his God? But he said something, that I will yet hope in the help of his countenance. I pray for someone this morning, your tide will turn for good in the name of Jesus. David was a man who offered spirit-inspired praise to God. His psalms were written in times of distress, in times of joy, but each psalm would point to the goodness of God at the end of the day. In Psalm 92, 1 and 2, Psalm 92, 1 and 2, he said, It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and sing praise to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. He began by saying, good thing to give thanks to God twice a day. By the time he got to Psalm 119, verse 164, Psalm 119, 64, he said, seven times a day I will praise you. Why? Because of the righteous judgment. By the time he got to Psalm 34, 1 to 4, he said, I will bless God at all times. Not twice a day, not seven times a day, but all times. In the good, in not so good, 
When things are going south, when things are positive, I will bless the Lord. In Mark 16, verse 1, the Bible talks about Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, that in their distress, in their confession, they still bought spices to come and worship the Lord. They were still willing to sacrifice that time and their resources in spite of their distress. The psalmist said in Psalm 4 verse 7, the NLT version, Psalm 4 verse 7, you have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. Praise the Lord. That truth can only come by the Spirit. This morning, what lessons are we taking from this meeting? Number one, Thanksgiving grants access to God's throne. In Psalm 145, Psalm 145, 4 to 5, enter it is gates with what? Thanksgiving and his cause with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Have you ever wondered why the Bible says that God's, the angels of children, they behold God's face? For me, the clue is in Psalm 8 verse 2. It says, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, he has ordained praise. So as the children praise God, the angels have access directly to God's throne. So the praises of children unlock the courts of heaven and have access to God's throne. The Bible says that David was a man after God's heart. God's heart. And I think two reasons, basically, this morning. Number one, he was a worshiper who understood God's blessing upon his life. It says in 1 Chronicles 29, 1 Chronicles 29, 10 to 12. Therefore David blessed the Lord before the assembly. And David said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. I thought you say amen. amen. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and reign over all. In your hand is power and might. Your hand is it is to make great and to give strength to all. He will give us strength this morning. Amen. Even to praise him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why was he a man after God's heart? Number two, he had a humble heart. I never took God's blessings for granted or as his due. A man becomes ungrateful when he says, oh, this is my right and doesn't come to him. But it was a man who believed that whatever I got from God was by God's, by God's mercy and grace. In 2 Samuel 7, verse 18. 2 Samuel 7, 18. Then David, King David went in and sat before the Lord and he said, Who am I, O Lord, God? And what is my house that you have brought me this far? He understood that the blessing of God come only from God. The Bible says also, in Psalm 51, 17b, that a broken and contrite heart, these, O God, you will not despise. The Hazar was a man who had an entitlement spirit. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 20. He said, Why did my master spare this Syrian? So he felt that each time that somebody came to the master, he must demand for money. Entitlement spirit. The same thing with Lot. Lot was a, uh, what should I say, an appendage, so to speak, to Abraham. He was the one giving the covenant. It was just added on as a baggage. And yet, when the older one said, you choose first, he looked up and saw. He felt entitled to the plains of Jordan. 
Brethren, never take for granted God's blessings in the name of Jesus. Number two, thanksgiving is a work of faith. Something interesting happened to my wife and I on Friday. We were going to, uh, for the Holy Ghost service. We had been in camp the whole week, but we were going to go to Shimawa on Friday. And then about 4.30, the rain started heavily. And I was saying, ah, should we stay and go to the auditorium? It's nearer, less stress. I was looking for encouragement from her. She said, let us go now. Okay. So we decided to go. By the time we got onto the main road, the rain was not as bad as I thought. It was okay. And, and instantly, a word dropped in my heart. He who observed the wind will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. And as I thought about that, it occurred to me that also he that is at his bleak situation will not sow praise to God. If I count all the issues I have, I won't sow praise to God. And therefore I may not reap his joy and his increase. What am I saying? Don't look at your circumstances in offering praise to God. Look at who he is and what he's able to do for you. Why is it important? The Bible says our work is a work of faith. And faith calls things that be not as though they are. The Bible says this is the victory overcame the world, even our faith. The just shall live by faith. In our journey of faith, no man gets to see the detailed plan. The itinerary, the timetable belongs to God. It may reveal, it may not reveal. Yours is to walk in obedience. Joseph thought he could fast track God's program. And when he interpreted the dream to the butler and said, when you get back to your kingdom, reap, mention me to Pharaoh. The Bible said the man got there, he forgot about him. Until God's time came. But the point is this. Joseph woke up a prisoner and slept a prime minister. I declare to someone here this morning, your change, that increase is 24 hours away in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Things may appear to look different and contrary, but God walks in the background. When Israel was to cross the Red Sea, everything appeared ordinary. The way was closed, but things changed as God intervened. He will intervene in your life today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thanksgiving strengthens our faith. Because an expression of our confidence in God's ability. The psalmist said in Psalm 57 verse 7, NLT version. Psalm 57 verse 7, NLT. My heart is confident in you, O God. My heart is confident, no wonder I can sing your praises. Number three. Thanksgiving is a catalyst for growth and enlargement. Jeremiah 30 and verse 19. Jeremiah 30, 19 says, Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, shall not diminish, and I will also glorify them, shall not be small. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Psalm 67, 5 to 7. Psalm 67, 5 to 7. Let the people praise you, O God. And the people praise you. And the earth shall yield our increase. God, our own God shall bless us. God shall bless us and the ends of the earth shall fear him in the name of Jesus. Amen. As a divine law, that whatever you appreciate God for has the capacity to increase. Praise is a catalyst for enlargement. Elders said that the child who thanks God, or thanks the children who thank the elders for what he has received, would you watch receive something else next day? I want to add the prayer now. Praise the Lord. Jesus gave thanks. And Lazarus, who was dead for four days, came back to life. As we thank God this morning, 
as you worship and just exalt the name of the God, that which has died in your life, which is good, will come back to life in the name of Jesus. Amen. That vision, that project, that business, that joy will come back to life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus gave thanks for five loaves of bread and two fishes. And that same bread and fish fed 5,000 men, not counting children and women. Hear what the Bible says in Mark 6, 41. Amplified version, Mark 6, 41. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing of praise and thanksgiving to the Father. Then he broke the loaves and repeatedly gave them to the disciples to set before the people and divided up the two fish among them. That which looks to be small in your hands will multiply in the name of Jesus. Amen. Know that your tank of thanksgiving must never run dry in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four, what can we learn this morning? Thanksgiving delivers peace of mind. It's a mystery we can't understand totally. But it does. In Philippians chapter 4, 6 to 7, KJV, Philippians 4, 4, 6 to 7. Be kept for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And then the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It's a mystery. The Bible says past understanding. But it works. Thank him, exalt him, and instead of distress, of worry, Peace of mind will come in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're unhappy about your marriage? Give thanks to God. That business is not doing well. Your financial career is not going the way it should go. Give thanks to God. And take up the issue in the place of prayer. One of the ways this works in our heart and mind is this. As we begin to praise God and thank him, our focus shifts from the issues we have onto God. Is that correct? And the Bible says he will keep in perfect peace those whose heart is stayed in him because he trusts in him. Isaiah 26 verse 3. So as I dwell on God rather than on my issues, I will have peace of mind instead of worry. Number five. Is more, have a right perspective of your challenges. Have what? Have a right perspective of your challenges. Our failures, our challenges, issues of life that we face, if processed from the right perspective, has the capacity to bring about promotion and breakthrough. Hello, church. Did you hear that? There's a principle called failing forward. And it just simply says that I will learn from my past errors. Is it scriptural? Yes. The Bible says in Proverbs 24, verse 16, For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. So issues of life come to face me. I can draw strength, lessons from it, and make my life better. Not that we delight in failing, or we look forward to failing, but we are saying that when it happens, rather than sit there and begin to be in misery, I will learn a lesson from there and let it be a springboard for success. And he first said, failure is the opportunity to begin again this time more intelligently. You will rise again. Amen. But don't make failure your bus stop. Learn from it, but don't dwell on it. The reason why the front screen is bigger than the rear mirror where you are going to is more important than where you are coming from. Romans 8, verse 28. 
Romans 8, 20 says, but we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. All things, the good, not so good, work together for God's glory and your good. Saul went in search of his father's asses with his servant. They searched many days, but they couldn't find, so they failed, so to speak. They couldn't find that, those asses. But yet, in his predicament, he said to someone, let us turn back and go home. Before, because by now, my father will be searching for us. And that servant said, no, let us go to a man of God around here, that he may tell us how we should go. And from there, Saul went to the man of God, Samuel, and came back anointed as a king. He failed in searching for the asses of his father, but returned as a king. Peter fished all night. I caught nothing. It was a failure. But that failure turned around to success. The story is in Luke chapter 5, 1 to 7. But maybe perhaps Peter understood from years of fishing that even though I didn't catch a fish today, I must prepare my nets for the next catch. Bible says when they came back, they were washing their fishes, their nets, preparing the nets for next assignment. And as we were doing that, in that place of assignment, God met with him. And from there, he was able to unlock his destiny. Don't give up. Never say never. One more try, one more push. That failure brought Peter to his destiny. Your next failure, if it had happened, will take your destiny in the name of Jesus. Many of the stories of success begins with a failure. But the truth is that we only hear, we only see the glory. We don't hear the story behind that glory. Give thanks because as a born child of God, all things are working together for your good in the name of Jesus. Amen. I hear in my spirit that challenge will end in praise in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning as we conclude, we need a spirit inspired or empowered perspective. Micah 3 8 a. Why? What you think is what you become. Our thoughts have a way of shaping our outlook and our perspective. Proverbs 3, verse 7. Verse 3 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. That's why the Bible says that we must guard our hearts with all diligence. For out of it are the issues. That determine our lives. Don't let the issue of life take away your joy and thanksgiving. In spite of all that is happening, there is so much to thank God for. You know, last Sunday coming to church in the morning, we normally leave very early. It appeared we were the only one on Lagos roads. And I was worried, ah, should I go back home? There was so much tension. But right now, no more tension. Even though your candidate may not have won, we are at peace. Give thanks to God. You know, a man does not value peace until he sees war. Eh. So when I was coming on that one, eh? if I, all the way through, I was just imagining many things. But I can't, Pastor can't come back now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. To count your blessings and name them one by one. Brethren, how many times did you go out last month and came back? This month we said happy, happy new month. Today is fifth, Abby. Between first and fifth, some have passed away. Were you dressed this morning coming to church? 
You dressed yourself, didn't you? Thank God for that. You can see. You can hear. You can talk. You can comprehend. Give praise to God. If we sit down and think carefully, there are many more things to thank God for. There are things we don't lack. But because of our human nature, we focus on what we need. The man who had no shoes stopped complaining. And he saw the man that had no feet to wear the shoes. As we close this morning, remember that God's kingdom is in righteousness, is in peace, and in joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14, verse 17. When the doubts of life come, when stress comes to take away your joy, remember his promises. Dwell on his word. Behold his word, because what you behold, you become. The psalmist said in Psalm 37, verse 25, Psalm 37, 37, 25. I'll be young and I am old and I've not seen the righteous forsaken. No, you see, you don't be forsaken in Jesus' name. You won't beg for bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember his promises. Say to the righteous, shall be well with him, shall eat the fruit of his doing. With him endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Your joy has come. Your joy has come in the name of Jesus. Sarah laughed last. You will laugh last. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, before I begin to pray, the Bible says something to us which we used to pray often for our nation. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn for the wicked ways that we hear from heaven and I forgive their sin and heal their land. Even if you are in your situation today because of sin, of error, there's a way out. In Micah 3, Micah 7, Micah 7, 8 to 9. Micah 7, 8 to 9. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. And I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the initial of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pleads my case and excuse judgment, justice for me. He will bring me forth to the light. I will see his righteousness. He may be here this morning. The issues that are plaguing your life are a consequence of sin. There is hope for you. Make the right turn. Turn back from that path. Seek the Lord again. If my people, he was speaking here to his people, not to the Gentiles, who are called by my name, will humble and turn from their wicked ways. All eyes closed this morning. All eyes bowed. That business, that career, that family can be healed if you make the right choice this morning. Are you here today? Yet to know the Lord, the Lord and the personal Savior? Or you have known him, but right now you know that you have gone back to vomit. He's calling you. Is God speaking to anyone this morning? If he's speaking to you, show by your hand and don't be ashamed. He wants to save you. He wants to bring you back to his kingdom. He's knocking upon the door of your heart. Bible says, if any man should hear his voice, open the door, it will come. Thank you, my sister. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my sister. Anyone else this morning you say, Lord, I want to know you. I want to serve you, Lord. Please lift your hand properly. Don't be ashamed. It is a journey, a choice you must make. It's your greatest breakthrough, so to speak. That is want to serve the Lord, to know him. Lord, we bless your name. Let us rise to our feet, all of us, please. Say, Father, thank you for the joy of salvation and the hope of heaven. Lift your voice to him this morning. Thank the Lord who has given you joy and the hope of heaven. That joy of salvation can be bought by anything. It comes from him. Give praise to the one 
who has saved you, written your name in the book of life, magnify him, declare his praise, is worth of all the praise and all the glory. Lord, I magnify you. Father, I give you praise, I give you glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. Amen. Hebrews 13, verse 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Say, Father, Father. please walk on the soul of my heart so I can continually offer the sacrifice of praise to you. Lift your voice to him. Please walk in our hearts, my Lord. Walk on the soul of our hearts so we can continually offer the sacrifice of praise to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, Father, Father, as we offer praise and thanksgiving, let the lands of our businesses, of our careers, of our marriages, of our wombs, our destinies, yield their increases to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we offer you praises and thanksgiving, let the lands of our businesses, of our careers, of our marriages, of our wombs, of our destinies, yield their increases to us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Glory, worship be unto your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. things which are temporal help us to appreciate that what you have done for us money cannot buy it help us appreciate that your grace can be purchased by dollar by naira or by stalin the things that men run after is more precious than gold than silver in the name of jesus let our eyes be open my lord thank you faithful father 
Jesus mighty name we have prayed praise the Lord let's clap on the Lord this morning let's appreciate our maker let's give praise to him please be seated Five. 2 Timothy 2 1 to 5 thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus it is time this morning to honor the Lord with our substance, 